On this week's episode of the Rebel Report, we've got Running Rebel Basketball and a feature on point guard Noah Robotham, how his kindergarten dream came true, and who inspired him to play basketball. The 51s will soon have a new name and logo. We sit down with Jim Gemma to update us on the Las Vegas Ballpark Stadium construction. Plus, we get in the spirit of Christmas with our hit single, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Hockey Season. All this and more on the Rebel Report. Welcome to Studio F on the campus of UNLV. This is the eighth episode of this season of the Rebel Report. I'm Jason Toktagian. And I'm Kalen Sokal. We only have one more episode of this season to go. We hope you have enjoyed watching us grow as journalists. Now let's get into some basketball. Running Rebels wrap up a seven game homestand to start the season before the National Finals Rodeo takes over the Thomas and Mac for a few weeks. His Caitlin Mansala to lay out matchups against Valparaiso and Cincinnati. This season has been a disappointment to see. The Rebels had a tough week ending with two losses for the last of the seven home game stretch against Valparaiso and Cincinnati. Even though Valparaiso defeated UNLV, this was an unforeseeable turnout, at least in the beginning, as the run-in Rebels had an 11-point lead. They even shot 60% from the field in the first half. At the end, Coach Menzies summarizes the stats. The team had 25 turnovers and 18 second-chance points. 72 points and 49 were us not blocking out or throwing the ball away. That's bad news and good news. <laughs> the bad news is obvious. We, we did all of that and, and, and ended up losing the game. The game slippage is extremely high right now, and that's probably the most uh, challenging thing as a teacher is to watch the process in the early stages. It's just when you don't have the result that you that you play for. Shortly after, it was another loss during their match with Cincinnati on December 1st. It was an unfortunate result as they only lost by four points with a 65 to 61 score. We're not yet halfway through the season, so the running Rebels still have a shot to turn the tables around as they have four wins out of seven games. For the Rebel Report, this is Caitlin Manansala. Catch the running Rebels at T-Mobile Arena on December 15th against BYU. UNLV senior guard Noah Rabotham has had quite the basketball career so far. Brianna Hernandez and I give you a closer look at the player's upbringing and journey to representing the running Rebels. There once was a boy named Noah. He was a basketball player. He was so good when he was in kindergarten, he played in the NBA. This is the exact words from ambitious Noah Robotham, who wrote this paper on March 21st, 2002. Noah. Noah started his basketball career at a very young age. One of the reasons why he got into the sport was because of his older brother, Czar. I think my brother just kind of playing at first made me love basketball. My dad taught me, and uh, since then my brother has taught me, so more so I idolize my brother and it's something that he did, so because he did it, it helped me fall in love with the game a lot easier. Noah followed his brother's footsteps. Not only did the brothers share the same jersey number, but they both play the point guard position and both went to Bishop Gorman High School here in Las Vegas, Nevada. On May 9th, 2014, Robotham decided to take his talents to Akron, Ohio, where he would represent the Zips. 
Throughout the three years he spent at Akron, there were many accomplishments that gave Noah some of the most memorable moments in his basketball career. We won every single year. I think uh, my freshman year, I tore my ACL, but when I stopped playing, I believe we had 19 wins with about 10 games left on the schedule. And uh, my sophomore year, 26 wins, and my junior year, we had 27. So um, that was my favorite thing because, you know, I went to Bishop Gorman where, you know, we rarely ever lost. So it's one thing I didn't want to get acclimated to. The weather and all that other stuff you get acclimated to. But um, winning and losing, I think, is a kind of fundamental practice of who I am, and I didn't want to kind of change that up. But um, I learned a lot. Uh, terminology, my coach had been there for you know, plenty of years and you know, he coached LeBron James. I had the opportunity to meet LeBron James a couple of times, which uh, was very cool. At the end of the 2016-2017 season, Noah Rabotham made the decision to come home and represent his hometown in a running Rebels uniform. His debut was on hold because he redshirted the entire 2017-2018 season, but Noah could not wait to get back on the court and play in front of a home crowd. I think one thing I, I have noticed more so than anything is like the production of a game. Like the production, I mean, whether it's a fireworks, a fire, um, the lights turning off, all that little stuff, I didn't have that at Akron. So when I, not really um, in tune to it during the game, but I mean, the jumbotron, you know, you're hearing stuff and it's more interactive. Noah has set high expectations for himself and he believes that he can turn this basketball team into a cohesive unit that can make noise in the world of college basketball. I've been lucky enough to play you know, at this level for a lot of games and uh, just kind of passing that experience off to my teammates. Um, I feel like I've had my trials and tribulations. I've had plenty of ups and downs and I'm gonna have plenty of ups and downs this season. So um, the opportunity to just kind of you know, convey that to my teammates and let them know how the season goes, not to get too high, not to get too low. I think will help those guys so they can stay a little bit more even killed. No, he's definitely uh, one of you know the vocal guys. Uh, you know, I, I think you know I can get I can get a lot better in that area. So I was definitely you know seeing him work and communicate with different players on the team. His real work is done uh, today at practice and uh, and in the locker room. Um, just a fantastic uh, person to have in your locker room that understands what you as a coach want. And so some of his stuff won't show up in the, in the stat lines, but it's phenomenal to, to have him, you know, as a part of the team. You know, I think we're a team that uh, we're going to lead by committee, so it's not going to be one sole leader. And um, I think if we continue to do that throughout the season, we'll have a good season. If there's one thing that can be taken away from Noah Rabotham's entire basketball career, it is that he makes his mother proud, and it's messages like this that make it all worth it. Hi, Mejito. Hope you're having a good day. Just wanted to remind you of a little boy who has made his dreams a reality. Love you, and I'm so proud of you. Noah is averaging six points and just under four assists per game. But as Coach Marvin Menzies said, many of the great things he does for the Reading Rebels does not show up on the stat line. On Friday, November 30th, UNLV hosted the second round of the National Invitational Volleyball Championship. If you haven't heard about it already, our very own Brandon McGregory is here to give you the scoop on how it went down. National Volleyball Championship as the UNLV Women's Volleyball take on Fresno State. The energy was high and you could already tell that the UNLV Women's Volleyball team were anxious to get on that court at the National Invitational Volleyball Championship. As the game began, the Rebels came out strong, scoring the first point of the game. They were hot and could not stop scoring, which led them to win the first set. As the second set approached, Fresno didn't go down easy, winning the second set with a score of 25 to 16. You could just feel the intensity in the air as the fifth set approached. The Rebels came clutch, winning the game against Fresno, three to two. How do you feel about the win? Uh, I think that this is a really great win for us as a team. We really put in a lot of effort throughout this whole season. We came in early for the summer, so it's just a really great feeling to have all of that work pay off, and especially to beat Fresno after going down 0-2 in them with conference this season, so that was great. I feel like we did our jobs as individuals, and we just supported each other. We were really positive, we were relentless, we were enthusiastic, we just had a lot of energy the whole game. We never gave up, and we just gave it 100% of what we had. The UNLV Women's Volleyball Team win the National Invitational Volleyball Championship against Fresno State. For The Rubber Report, I'm Brandon McGregory. 
the Rebels had 51 kills in their last match. They look forward to continue their success on the road. It was a game of experience versus youth during the annual UNLV alumni baseball game on November 10th at Earl E. Wilson Stadium in a high-scoring matchup. It was all fun and games during a great day to watch the current UNLV athletes in a seven-inning alumni game filled with hits, strikeouts, foul balls, but especially runs. The active roster scoring early on keeping the game in their favor until the end, winning it 19-1. to after the game, both teams enjoyed a barbecue together with no hard feelings. For some alumni players, being back in the stadium brings back memories. Uh, you know, my days in college, and it's fun being out here. It's a beautiful field. You know, I try to come out here whenever I can. Um, I still live in the valley, but, you know, it's really cool. The Rebels kick off the new season February 15th in three games against Seattle. And speaking of baseball, we send it over to Lydia for this week's Rebel Report Time Out. Rebel Report Time Out. Well, it's an exciting time for Las Vegas' minor league baseball team. We've got a brand new ballpark in the works, a new MLB affiliate, and soon a new name and logo. Joining us in studio for this week's Rebel Report timeout, Jim Gemma, Media Relations Director at Las Vegas Professional Baseball. Jim, welcome. Lydia, thanks for having me on the show. All right, so just to get started, Howard Hughes Corporation announced that they will be unveiling the new name and logo this Saturday, December 8th. Correct. Uh, long waiting time. Uh, you know, the baseball winter meetings, it's kind of coinciding with that. We're going to have some uh, the VIPs there, uh, Branch Ricky, our president of the PCL. So the event, uh, yeah, will be Saturday from uh, 2 to 2.30. Finally, the unveiling of the new uh, team name and logo. And where will it be at? It's going to be downtown Summerlin. It's actually right next to the uh, uh, 51 Sales Center, which is basically, if anybody knows uh, the Maggiano's or the California Pizza Kitchen in that area, it's right in that area. Uh, so we uh, plan on having a, a really good crowd, and it'll, it'll be a fun day. And just a little disclaimer, John will not be unveiling the name to us, but he will be telling me after the show, right? Uh, no, I, I don't know it's where okay, you got okay. that we'll information from. We'll talk later, from. we'll talk later, it's fine. Okay, we can talk later. Uh, so some people have submitted their, um, their options for the name, and it's yes. been in the works for a few months. Can you explain to me a little bit of the process? What are some of the deciding factors when choosing a new name and logo? Well, we're the Las Vegas Stars from 1983 to 2000, 51s for 18 years, the Stars for 18 years, from uh, 51s from 2001 to 18. So obviously uh, you don't have to do this, but when you get a new brand like that Las Vegas ballpark's going to be, and we knew the Mets were going to leave because the Wilpons, the Mets ownership group, purchased uh, AAA Syracuse. So the Mets are going to be in the International League, which is all in all, it'll be a good thing for the Mets. They're a really good affiliate for us. But we got the Oakland A's in September, which is a great fit for us. So usually when all that falls into place, uh, if you're going to rebrand, you might as well do it all the way and have a new te team nickname. It's kind of a long and methodical process because you got to go through minor league baseball licensing and get logo specs, colors, all that good stuff. So uh, we did have the fans during the summer do uh, submissions. We had, I think, over 2,000 names, everywhere from Coyotes to Scorpions to the Roundabouts to the Red Rocks on and on and on. So we we're really happy the fans had a lot of uh, uh, input on this and uh, you know it's, they pared it down to some names but the, the final name will be uh, revealed on Saturday. So what happens to Cosmo? Is he just going to go back in space? Well the fans love Cosmo, the kids love Cosmo. You know some teams do have secondary mascots. Right now Cosmo's still with us. Uh, I just say you know the, the spaceship left without him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm going with yes, him. yes, Cosmo, uh, you know, Area 51 and all that good stuff. But uh, again, uh, as of right this second, Cosmo is still our mascot. And again, uh, teams in minor league baseball do have a secondary mascot. So hopefully uh, the spaceship will not uh, come back <laughs> and pick them up. So that'll all uh, be determined once we get into the springtime. Okay. And so right now, the market for sports is it's going crazy. Um, what can you expect? from this, all of these new changes for the 51s, the longest running pro franchise in Las Vegas sports history. Yeah, you know, minor league baseball, it, it sounds corny, but it's affordable family fun. 
entertainment. As we know, the Cirque shows here, Major League Sports is a whole different animal. It's very expensive. Uh, the thing about minor league baseball, they pride themselves on why we've been here for 36 years. You can still up, walk up and get a ticket. I know I think our low end ticket's still gonna be 18 bucks. Uh, you know, it, the bottom line is it's affordable. It, it's really, uh, it's called minor league, but it really isn't. Uh, the, the athletes are, are world-class athletes. They've either been in the major leagues or on their way back from the major leagues or trying to get way up with the major leagues. But the product between the chalk lines has always been great in the Pacific Coast League. So, uh, you know, the thing about the Las Vegas ballpark, the fans really deserve a new ballpark for supporting us over the years. It's going to be a fantastic place. So what can we expect from the new $80 million ballpark? Well, you know, uh, they're doing a great job, Hunt Penna. They're about 60% through. Uh, you know, they're looking to ha hand that thing over like sometime in March. Our first game's April 9th. The player amenities is going to really be great. It's going to be up to par to what other AAA teams have with the hydrotherapy to uh, weight room, uh, indoor hitting cages, something we never had, which is kind of hard to believe in Las Vegas. We had a homestand in July with Memphis and Nashville, and it was in the one teens the whole time. And your hitting time, uh, that time of year is four o'clock. Well, good luck getting on the field then. Uh, so it would be great to have indoor hitting cages, uh, great clubhouse. Uh, you know, the player amenities are going to be great. The fan amenities are going to be just as good with a pool in right center. Uh, you know, ticket sales are going great. Uh, so it's, it's just a win-win for everybody. All right, Jim. Well, thank you. It's been a true pleasure having you in studio with us. Be sure to check out um, their home opener, April 9th of 2019. Right now, we'll send it over to Naomi for this week's panel discussion. Thank you so much, Lydia. Now, on to this week's panel discussion. We have Brandon, Karina, and Michaela here with us today. Um, we're going to start it off with talking about Lady Rebels, Lady Rebels basketball. So, Brandon, what can you tell us about the Lady Rebels? Right now, they are 1-5. in five. They just had a loss to USC here at home, but now they're going on to away games. What can you tell us about them? and their season so far. You know, I must say that, you know, they're a young team, you know, they, a lot of their seniors graduated. Um, so they're still, you know, trying to get used to the game, but I feel like as the season goes on, they'll be okay. They just have to play defense. You know, Katie Powell just got injured against the game against USC. So that's two of their re biggest rebounders out. So when they played against USC, they're, they're pretty, you know, the USC was pretty tall and they also had shooters. So the biggest thing for, I think, would be for them to play defense throughout the season. Um, you know, hopefully, I talked to Katie, actually, she said she was extremely sad about the, um, the injury, and hopefully she's, she's back soon. Yeah, was I was at that game, and mm -hmm. right when she got hurt, everyone was just like so quiet yeah. in Cox Pavilion and mm -hmm. really sad for her. Then she came back out after that and then had crutches and everything, so hopefully she gets better soon. And, Brandon McGregory, our very own Brandon McGregory, is always at the Lady Rebel Games because he DJs <laughs> at the Lady Rebel, Rebel Games. So on to VGK, Karina. So there are two injuries that we're going to talk about uh, with the VGK team. First, Paul Statsny. What can you tell us about that and what is the update on him? Yeah, so Paul Statsny got injured back in October. So he's on a week-to-week -week evaluation. But once he comes back, he'll be going straight to um, the second line. And so originally that was um, the head coach's plan to have Tuck um, and Stancy and Patretti playing side by side, which that means that Egan, who's playing center now, he'll be going back to the third line. Um, but that won't be back. Um, that won't be until a couple more weeks until he gets back. Yeah. And then another injury, Eric Howla, lower body injury. Can you tell us a little more about that too? Yeah, so he also got injured. Mm -hmm. Howla is on a month-to-month -month evaluation, which means he won't be back until a couple of months. And um, But on the bright side, he hasn't been ruled out for the rest of the season, so that's some good news for VGK. Yeah, definitely is. And moving on to more positive news after talking about two injuries, hopefully they get you know healed up soon and back on to the games. Michaela, we're going to talk about the victory that VGK just had against the Capitals. Five to three, they won. And right now they have 15 wins and 13 losses. And they're fourth in the Pacific Division. What can you tell us about them and what's going on with the team? So first off, what a sweet victory, yes. sweet revenge over the Capitals. They beat us in the Stanley Cup this earlier this year in right. June. And it's just amazing how 
it was such a cool game to watch because we were 3-3 and there was only like a minute and 30 seconds left. I was so worried we were going to go to overtime. But guess who comes up with the goal is Nate Schmidt. And it just was crazy in T-Mobile Arena because this is Nate Schmidt's first goal. He's been out for suspension for 20 games. And it was just rewarding because, like, oh, thank God we're not going into overtime. But, of yeah. course, there's still time left for the Capitals to come back. So they pull out their goalie. And then, you know, they're rallying back. They have an extra man on the ice. And Nate Schmidt, again, gets the goal from, like, 90 feet. And it was just like, yes, we got that victory. We, got, we beat the Capitals. That was our game six, right. not the other one. That was our game six. And it was just so rewarding to see Nate Schmidt back on the ice, the energy he brings to the Golden Knights. It is sad to see, like, Statsy is, he's um, practice, and then Pahala, he won't be back yet, but still, like, the team is coming back together because, you know, Nate is back. There's just so much energy, and they played the Black Hawks tonight, Chicago, and it'll be a home game. And then also, a bunch of us are going to the Stars game. I was just about to talk about that. Shout out to John's friend, who, yes. I'm sorry about your bachelor, par bachelor party, His but bachelor thank party. you so much for thinking of <laughs> us. And it just that's going to be an exciting game, too, because the Stars are like 15 and 10. Yeah. But the Golden Knights, they're, they had a slow start, and now they're just coming back, and they're going to excel. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, you guys should have a lot of fun at that game. I can't go. I can't make it, but should be really amazing. Well, that's all the time we have for this panel discussion for this week. Uh, now we're sending it back to the desk. Thanks, guys. One October was a night Vegas would never forget. Luckily, the Golden Knights helped heal our community before the puck ever hit the ice. We have more on how they continue to be the city's light after that uh, dark night. Shooting for the stars when I couldn't make a killing Didn't have a dime but I always had a vision Always had high, high, high hopes Had to have high, high hopes for a living I think that they're the first professional sports team in Las Vegas history and that's a pretty big deal. Uh, I didn't think it was a matter of like if we'd ever get one, I think it was just a matter of when but I think the city was definitely ready for it. It came at the perfect time. Vegas Golden Knights started their inaugural season two days after the mass shooting. Like all of you, I'm proud to call Las Vegas home. I met my wife here, my kids were born here, and I know how special this city is. To all the brave first responders that have worked timelessly and courageously throughout this whole tragedy, we thank you. To the families and friends of the victims, know that we'll do everything we can to help you and our city heal. We are Vegas strong. Associate head coach for UNLV men's hockey, Nick Raboni, survived the tragic events on 1 October. You never expected anything, um, you know, crazy to, or harmful to come of it, but you know, we were just there enjoying it, and then next thing you know, like chaos erupted. I didn't think it was gunshots. Even after I got shot, I thought I got you know, hit with like a, um, maybe like a police beanbag, like shotgun or something like that, just because it didn't feel like I would think a, sh a gunshot should feel. Um, but even when you're, you're hearing the barrage, you know, initially it kind of sounded like maybe uh, like a blown speaker or something like that. And then, you know, I look around and people are ducking and, um, you know, so I crouched down and then that's when I felt, you know, the initial strike. And like I said, even then I didn't think I got shot until like blood started coming out of my nose and my mouth. And then, you know, I look down, I have a hole in my chest. So that's when you're like, okay, this is real. We got to get out of here as fast as we can. Las Vegas, please welcome to the ice to drop the puck on the 2017-18 inaugural season. Survivors of the events on 1 October. Before the puck ever hit the ice, the team gained new fans in the way they responded to the tragedy. Having the Golden Knights become involved with 1 October and being able to help the community really, really made me love the Golden Knights even more because it shows that they're not just a sports team here to just 
you know, build revenue for Las Vegas. They're actually here that they care about the community, they want to help better um, the community and the survivors of uh, October 1. A lot of people used the Golden Knights as an escape from 1 October. What they did uh, for the city after that, that day was crucial. The strength and perseverance shown by survivors like Nick Raboni are a true testament of what the Las Vegas community represents. On the one year anniversary, the Knights continue to support survivors by attending blood drives. For hockey fans, when you think of donuts, better yet, Krispy Kreme donuts, you think of VGK goalie Mark andre Fleury. Every home game is a chance for free donuts. Megan Platt tells us more. Back-to-back -back shutouts, everyone should be lining up at Krispy Kreme with their golden ticket to get a free dozen donuts. The Golden Knights have an ongoing business deal with the well-known donut shop Krispy Kreme. With Flurry always in the goal, every single Golden Knights game is a chance to get free donuts. Whenever the Golden Knights have a shutout game, every fan at the arena during that game can go to Krispy Kreme the next day to get a dozen free donuts. Dale Nillis loves when the Golden Knights have a shutout. It's great when he does have a shutout because that shows how good he is. We talked to Lisa Sill and learned that she has actually been a recipient of a dozen free donuts. Well, a few times I haven't done it because I don't always have time to take off work, but the one time I did it, it was great because I got to get out of work and go and get donuts for everyone and bring them back, so it was really nice. Going to a Golden Knights game is fun for all the fans that go. Here's to more shutouts in the future, which also means more free donuts. For The Rev Report, I'm Megan Platt. Flurry felt so bad for Krispy Kreme because he thought they might run out of donuts, but of course that wasn't the case. It's the holiday season and Michaela Jackson remixed a classic holiday song, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, to It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Hockey Season. And Naomi Brown joins Michaela in the carol. Let's take a listen and see you next week on the last episode of The Rebel Report Season 6. Enjoy! No, I'm the biggest Golden Knight fan. No, I am. I went to every single game last season. But have you met Bark Andre Furry? But you can't deny that. It's beginning to look a lot like hockey season. Everywhere I go. Take a look in the strip and then it's glistening once again with hockey sticks and Golden Knights aglow. It's beginning to look a lot like hockey season. Gear in every store But the prettiest sight to see Is the cheer that will be In T-Mobile Arena A pair of hockey skates and a puck That shoots is the wish of Stassi and Smith While Bill will score and go for more Is the hope of Galanta McPhee And Vegas fans can hardly wait For playoffs to start again it's beginning to look a lot like hockey season!